Hello and welcome to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel in the Basics of Cryptology series. This video is about random numbers. The video is structured into different parts. In the first part, I want to discuss why do we need random numbers in cryptology. Then I want to discuss true versus pseudo-random numbers, what is the difference. Then we want to have a look at a generator for random numbers, the Linear Congruential Generator, or LGR. After that, we will have a look at cryptographic secure random numbers. And finally, we will have a look how to generate random numbers in Crypto2. As with all the videos in the Basics of Cryptology series, we will first have a look at where we are with respect to this graph here. And as we know, cryptology consists of cryptography and cryptanalysis. And this video deals with cryptography, modern cryptography, symmetric and asymmetric modern cryptography, since random numbers are needed for both. So why do we need random numbers? And cryptographic keys are needed for encryption algorithms or ciphers. For example, a 256-bit key for an AES-256 could look like 1011 and so on. So we have 256-bit for the key. And encryption on the internet, as we know, works more or less automatically without the need of using a password. For instance, when you want to communicate with the Amazon web server, you go to amazon.com and then the Amazon web server negotiates with your browser an encryption method and the ongoing communication is encrypted. And for every encrypted connection on the internet, a new and different cryptographic key like this one here is needed. And when you establish a connection to a server, the keys are transferred between the client, that's your browser for instance, and the server. And for transferring or negotiating the keys, Diffie-Hellman is used or RSA is used for example. And the following communication then, your connection is encrypted with a symmetric cipher and the exchanged key. And of course, an attacker should not be able to guess this automated generated key. And that means that keys for cryptographic protocols or algorithms are randomly generated. So this bit sequences here, these random keys are generated using random number generators. And additionally, initial vectors, IVs that are used for encryption or nonces are also randomly generated. And finally, to get random numbers, we have to generate these using secure random number generators. Now let's have a look at true versus pseudo random numbers. And we differentiate between true and pseudo random numbers. A true random number is, for instance, created by observing real physical phenomena that are expected to be random. And I have some examples here. The first example could be atmospheric noise, like we can see here with these clouds. Or we have magnetic noise. Or every other electromagnetic or quantum phenomena can be used to generate real or true random numbers. But of course, we cannot always observe such things and getting these random numbers is somehow slow. And because of that, we use pseudo-random numbers. And these pseudo-random numbers are created using, for instance, an algorithm. And this algorithm, we have different algorithms for creating pseudo-random numbers, this algorithm produces long sequences of apparently random numbers. And the algorithm uses a seed value on which it bases the sequence. What this means we will see when we have a look at our linear congruential generator later on. But of course, knowing the seed for our algorithm, the complete sequence can be recomputed. That means that we have, of course, no real randomness. We have this pseudo-randomness and the seed is, a, we can say, start value for our randomness. And finally, we do not only have the true random numbers and the pseudo random numbers, we have also hybrid approaches. And these hybrid approaches, for instance, could create the seed using a true random number generator that's low, and then generate the following random numbers using such a pseudo random number generator. And then we can get more and faster random numbers than if we, as if we would use this true random number generators. And now as an example, and as I already said, let's have a look at the linear congruential generator or LGR, which is such a random number generator. 
and it generates a pseudo-random sequence using this simple equation here. So we have y i equals to a multiplied y i minus 1 plus b and of this here we take modulus m. So what are all these variables? So we have the y here and we have y0 which is our start value for the um, sequence of random numbers. Then we have this factor a which we use to multiply each time we generate a new number the previous random number. Then we have the increment value b and we have the module m. And when you use for instance as a start value 0, as a as a factor 3, as the increment 5 and as the modulus m or the module m then you get this sequence here 0, 5, 23, 14, 16 and so on. And after 30 numbers we start again. And this here looks quite random but of course knowing all these parameters here and the start value we can recompute this sequence here. So this random number generator is clearly not suitable for cryptographic purposes but is a good example for pseudo-random numbers. Now we could ask ourselves what is the maximum period of such a random number? And the maximum period m minus 1 because we only can get the numbers from 0 to m minus 1 of the generator can be constructed by the following three rules. The first rule is that the increment b and the module m are relatively prime. And in our example here, 5 and 31 are co-prime. So they are relatively prime. This is fulfilled. And as we know, we have here 30 numbers, so we got the maximum period. Then the next rule is that each prime factor of m divides a minus 1. We have the prime factor of m here, that's only 1, and 1 divides our 2, because 3 is the a here, minus 1 is 2. So 1 divides 2, this is also fulfilled for our example here. And then we have to know that if m is divisible by 4, then m minus 1 can also be divided by 4. And as we can see here, 31 is not divisible by 4, so we don't have to have a look at if m minus 1 can also be divided by 4. So all these rules are fulfilled by our random number generator or by the LGR with these parameters here, so we get the maximum period. Clearly, when you want to construct a random generator with a much bigger period, you have to check for all these rules here. And as a basic rule of thumb, to generate a LGR with a maximum period, just use prime numbers for A, B and for the module m. Now let's have a look at cryptographic secure random numbers and a cryptographic secure number generator or CSRNG is a random number generator with properties making it suitable for yes cryptography. And we have two rules or um, properties that we have to fulfill here and the first one is the satisfy the next bit test. And what does this mean? When we have a random number generator and we want to test if it's a cryptographic secure random number generator, given the first k bits of a random sequence generated with this random number generator, there is no polynomial time algorithm that can predict the k plus one bit with a probability of success better than 50%. And this in short word means that we cannot know which is the next bit that comes out of our random number generator or our cryptographic secure random number generator. This should not be possible. Even having all the bits that we received previously, we cannot say which is the next bit that comes out of our random number generator. And then our second um, property for the cryptographic secure random number generator is the withstand state compromise extensions. And that means given the complete internal state of our random number generator, it should be impossible to reconstruct the stream of random numbers prior to the revelation. So you have a random number generator, it has some internal variables, an internal state, and even if you have everything, you cannot construct the random numbers that we created or that our random number generator created before coming to this state. And Cryptographic secure random number generators are mostly based therefore on non-deterministic 
random number generators. And these are the true random number generators that I talked about a little earlier. And these are these uh, natural phenomenons, for instance, that we use. And these generators, of course, are secure but slow. And that's why we need the cryptographic secure pseudo-random number generators based on cryptographic primitives on number theoretical problems. That means we can construct a random number generator, for instance, using modern ciphers or hash functions, or we use number theoretical problems. And these algorithms here, of course, are a lot of faster than our true random number generators, but they are not really true random number generators. They are also deterministic. If we know the seeds of these generators, we can generate the same numbers. But these random number generators here, the cryptographic primitives and the number theoretical problems or based um, random number generators, they have to fulfill these two properties here. Now let's do it in Crypto2. And in Crypto2, I want to have a look at the linear congruential generator. And I want to show you how you can generate real or cryptographic secure random numbers, not true random numbers that's not possible in Crypto2 because we, do, we need, for instance, hardware to do so. But we can create cryptographic secure random numbers in Crypto2 and we have a lot of different or other random number generators. So let's have a look at these. I'm here now in Crypto2 and the first thing I want to show you is the linear congruential generator. And you just search here for linear, then you get the linear congruential generator. And the nice thing with Crypto2 is that this algorithm here is so simple that we can construct it only using math components. And the variable names here are a little different. When we go back to our slides, we have here y1 or yi and yi minus 1. In this case, this here is xn and x. So this is a start value here. And then we have xn, that's a y1 or yi minus 1. Then we have the a, that's the same as here on our slides. And instead of b, we have c and we have our module. But the numbers are the same. Here for a we have 3, as start value we have 0, the m is 31, and the b, which is now c, is a 5. And when we start this workspace here, then we have a loop here, which will go through all the numbers and then will output all the numbers here. So let's try it. And clearly it goes on and on and on, but we stop it now. Then I scroll back. So we start with the 5, that's the next number after the 0, then we have 20, 3 and so on. And then somewhere after 30 numbers we will have the 0. And then it starts again with 5, 20, 3, 14, 16 and so on. So as we can see this is, is not random at all, but it looks like a random sequence. And of course we can adapt our A, our C or B and the M, and then we can create, uh, create much bigger sequences of pseudo-random numbers. Now let's have a look at the other random number generators that we have implemented in Crypto2. To do so, I go back to the start center and then I search for random. And then we have random number generators. And here we have a template with the random number generator component and we have here a text output that shows us random bytes. And with the settings here you can change the algorithm you want to use. For instance we also have the linear congruential generator, we have the ICG here, subtractive generator, power based random number generator, then we have random random and the random random is the random number generator implemented in .NET. And we can change the output type here. For instance, we can say we want to have a number, we want to have a byte array. Let's create a number. The output length in bytes can be defined here and we can give a seed. Let's test it without seed. And then we get 18 and <laughs> a very long number. I don't know how long it is. <laughs> it's 38 characters, so but I don't know what kind of number it is. It's way too long. and. When we stop this here and we press play again, we get a different number. 
because the .NET random number generator, when you don't give a seed to it, it creates or uses a random seed. But when we use the seed here, let's use for instance zero, we get nine, six, something, a random number. But when we stop it and when we restart it, we get the same random number. And this is based on the fact that we use the same seed. And when we change the seed, of course, we get a different number. Now let's have a look at a cryptographic secure random number generator. This is the RNG crypto service provider from .NET. And this <laughs> here does not even use a seed that you can specify, but you can restart it here and you get every time a random or a different random number. And this random number generator here, the RNG crypto service provider, you could use for actually creating random numbers for cryptographic functions because it's a secure cryptographic or a secure random number generator. What else could we do here? So as I said, you can change the type here. So when you want to generate a random key for a cryptographic algorithm, then you change this to byte array. And then for instance, we could generate a 64 bit key. Then we have eight bytes, eight bytes multiplied with or by eight bits is 64 bit. And we want to see the digits or the, the bits of this number. So we have the string uh, encoder here. And we connect the output here with the byte array input of the string encoder. Then we connect the string encoder with our random bytes here. And this will be random bits. And we can change the string encoder to binary. And remove this, we make this a little bigger. And when we restart it right now, we see here a random bit sequence. This could be, for instance, then used as a cryptographic key. And when we restart it, we always get different random numbers here. Yes, and this is everything I wanted to show you as an introduction to random numbers. So we need random numbers for generating cryptographic keys, init vectors, or nonces, for, for instance, for cryptographic protocols. When you need a random number, you could use, for cryptographic purposes, the RNG crypto service provider that you find in .NET. And as I already said, this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.